Hello and welcome to Get Understanding. I'm Ramson Mumba and I am so glad you could join us for today's broadcast. Hola familia hermosa, es un gusto para nosotros tenerlos aquí el día de hoy. Los invitamos a quedarse a disfrutar de nuestro programa, pues él les será de mucha bendición. Yo soy su pastora, Estrella Mumba. Today as we get into the word of God, we are believing for great things to take place as you listen to the word and the spirit of faith begins to get on you and you begin to see great manifestations of the goodness of God. Los vemos al final del programa. No se muevan. El Shaddai International Christian Center is a community of people who are passionate about sharing the love, hope, goodness, and purpose of God to our generation. The El Shaddai, I see, is a prophetic church. It's a church with healing in their wings. It's a church that just don't know how to worship, but knows how to decree the word of God to a generation. It's a church that is vested and founded on revelation knowledge. It's a church that will prophesy life to a dying world. El Shaddai International Christian Center is a global vision with churches on three continents, four different countries, and 10 different cities. Our meetings are family-oriented with vibrant, extravagant worship and inspiring practical teaching from God's Word. It would be our pleasure to welcome you to this family, and we look forward to seeing you soon. So if you can be righteous, Apart from the cross, based on your performance, then Jesus Christ died in vain. That's what you're saying. Look at chapter 3, still in the book of Galatians. And verse 18, now let's deal with the other part. Because we, de we dealt with the God part. Now let's deal with your natural day by day. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by what? Promise. Now, look at this. He said, okay, now, now it's not just that you will be declared righteous or made right before God based on your works. It, it's not going to happen like that. Even if now you want to be blessed, if you're going to be blessed based on what you do, in accordance to keeping the law, then the promise is no longer a promise. The, the inheritance is no longer by promise. It becomes something you earn. So far, we've established that <laughs> you've been redeemed from the curse because Jesus became your substitute. And if you try to become right with God based on your performance and your behavior, you invalidate the cross, you frustrate the grace of God. Now we are dealing with this thought. If you now leave this place thinking you're going to be blessed based on your own merit, again, you are saying to God, you owe me the blessing. Therefore, it is no longer a relationship of grace. It is a transactional relationship. Do you really think God owes you healing? Do you think he owes you a sound mind? Huh? Do you think he owes you prosperity? Somebody said, well... Now we're going against stuff we thought we knew. No, 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 just, just wait until you see where we're going. The motivation has changed. In the old covenant, you ought to do and do and do, and then because God knew you wouldn't do enough to satisfy the law, he gave them a sacrifice system where through the blood of animals, they would get the blessing not because they kept the entire law, but because the blood of animals covered their mistakes. So they could be blessed based on the sacrifice. But here is the deal. If Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, then why does it seem like everywhere you turn, Christians are participating in the curse? 
I mean, am I the only Jew in Jerusalem asking that question? Do you, you want to go further than that? Why is it that even preachers scare you that if you don't give, if you don't tithe, you are cursed with a curse? Now, I got your attention, didn't I? If in the new covenant there is no curse, why are you telling me there's going to be a curse if I don't do ABCD, we just go through it. The Bible says, Jesus Christ is the end of the law. And there is no curse on my life. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, as we build more and more, th this is a higher life. It's a whole different type of life. Uh, <laughs> probably Tuesday night in London, we we're going to show you why this is higher and set you up for higher manifestation. That's what I'm working on. I'm not just working on giving you information. I'm working on you beginning to show some higher manifestations. I'm working on you getting to the place where you begin to reveal stuff to your peers and your generation that they will have no choice but to concede that this is the Lord's doing and it is what? Marvelous. And stuff that they can't explain when they look at you because God is going to show up and show out. Okay, 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 let's, let's slow down because we're teaching. Now, here is, here is the deal. So, I'm redeemed from this curse and I am, I'm no longer going to be blessed based on keeping the law and my performance and, and blah, blah, blah. But, but, but here is the thing for people who are wanting to, does it mean then that we are lawless? If not being under the law is the new way, and Jesus kept the law, does no law equal lawlessness? Certainly not. I want to go a different direction because I need to paint this picture in a broader spectrum and then zero in on specifics. Let's take it from the area of sowing. Uh, go to the book of Hebrews, chapter, chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. And then we're going to apply it to every area of your life. Even when they scared you, that if you don't sow, there is a curse. You got tired of that and it lost its power. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hebrews 6 and verse 20. Where the forerunner, talking about Jesus, has entered for us, even Jesus, having become a priest, Forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Somebody shout, the order, the order of Melchizedek. Is anybody alive? Say it again, the order, the order. of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Now, look at this, verse 1, chapter 7. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High, who met Abram returning from the slaughter of kings and blessed him, to whom also Abram gave what? A tenth part. He gave him a tithe of all things, being translated first, king of righteousness, and then king of peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, check this out, man, neither having beginning nor end of days, but made like the son of God, remains a priest forever. Here is, here, is, here is Abraham, 430 years before the law. And he comes back from the battle of kings without a law. Nobody saying there's a curse if you do all and keep all this stuff that you got from the war. Without any law, he meets Melchizedek and he gives him a tithe of all. And chapter 6 told us that Jesus Christ is a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. 
Hebrews 3 and 1 says, Therefore, holy brethren, I like that scripture. Consider, partakers of the heavenly calling. Consider Jesus, the high priest of your profession. Guess what? If you're born again, Jesus Christ is your high priest. Ooh, how many of you believe that? How many of you believe Jesus is a, okay, okay. So, so your high priest has a priesthood that is in line with the order of Melchizedek. Now, continue reading. Now, consider how great this man was to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi who received the priesthood have a commandment. Oh, oh, oh. So the, the Old Testament now, it was based on commandments. So they had a commandment to receive the tithe from the people according to the law. That is, from their brothers, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham. Look at this. Here is a man who is not from the tribe of Levi, who were the priests according to the law, receiving a tithe from Abraham. This is big. Can we just study the Bible? Someone said, where are you going with this? Let me take you there. I know at, at the moment you're not feeling like, oh, Shanda. Oh. No, no, not yet. <laughs> Children want to be inspired all the time. Grown folk want to be taught. If you just want to be inspired, you won't make many changes, and therefore you will not have as much breakthrough. Come on, somebody. So here is Abram tithing to Melchizedek, who's not from Levi, and the, 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 the tribe of Levi, who have a commandment to tithe. Read on. Tithed to Melchizedek because they were still in the loins of Abraham. Can I put something in that equation? You ain't got to worry about your children. When you sow your seed, they sow the seed. Because you are under the blessing, they are under the blessing. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. How many of you are expecting your children to be blessed? Come on. Okay, now look at this. So, but he who is without genealogy is not derived from them and received tithes from Abraham and he blessed him who had the promise. Notice, Melchizedek received the tithe and he released the blessing. Now remember all of this. We're trying to see the guy who's been redeemed from the curse and the law and the guy who's going to do it based on the law. And we're only starting with this area because most people can count. El Shaddai International Christian Center is a community of people who are passionate about sharing the love, hope, goodness, and purpose of God to our generation. The El Shaddai I see is a prophetic church. It's a church with healing in their wings. It's a church that just don't know how to worship, but knows how to take free the word of God to a generation. It's a church that is vested and founded on revelation knowledge. It's a church that will prophesy life to a dying world. El Shaddai International Christian Center is a global vision with churches on three continents, four different countries, and 10 different cities. Our meetings are family-oriented with vibrant, extravagant worship and inspiring practical teaching from God's Word. It would be our pleasure to welcome you to this family, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Can you count? Yes, sir. <laughs> Some of you are... No, we, we haven't started dealing with attitudes because those stuff you can conceal. We haven't started dealing with the hidden motives of the heart because you can play the church game for a while. So we're going to start with something that is pretty easy to understand. Numbers, everybody can count. How are we doing? Well, I don't know. Well, let's count. 
<laughs> okay, 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 look at this. Look at this. So Abraham released the tithe. Melchizedek did what? Come on, talk back to me. Bradford, Abraham released the tithe. Melchizedek did what? Now beyond, verse 7, all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the word better. Here mortal men who receive tithes, but there he receives them of whom it is, witne- it is witness that he lives forever. Even Levi who receives tithes today, he paid tithes through Abraham, so to speak, for he was still in the loins of his father when his father met Melchizedek. So check this out. He says even the priests that received the tithe, actually they also tithed when their daddy tithed because they were still in his loins. They were yet to come out of him. So actually the guy who receives the tithe was also a tither before the law. Now this is big. If perfection were to come through the Levitical law, In other words, if you could have everything, righteousness and inheritance on the basis of the law, what further need was there that another should rise according to the order of Melchizedek? He's now telling you, okay, the the commandment to tithe and the priesthood according to Aaron and the Levites, if those could help you and get the fullness of your blessing, why did Jesus have to rise and become a priest according to the order of Melchizedek? Let me put it another way. If the old covenant, this is synonymous with chapter 8, had no fault in it, there would have been no need for a new covenant. So, check this out. And not be called according to the order of Aaron. So Jesus didn't come according to that. For the priesthood, this is big. The priesthood being changed, in other words, because Jesus didn't come from Aaron's children who are the Levites that had a commandment to receive tithes, therefore the priesthood had been changed. Read this. If it had been changed, then of necessity, there is also a change of the law. Ooh, look over here, look over here. No New Testament believer has a commandment to tithe according to the law. I knew you'd be shocked. That's why I'm not screaming and getting too excited today. I want you to hear it. You don't have to tithe according to that system. It's changed. (laughs) Some of you are like, yeah, boy, I'm glad I came today. (laughs) What's that? That's what's up around here. I knew I liked this message. Uh Uh-huh, let's read on. (laughs) Some of you are already seeing a new Brazilian weave. Let's let's just, because you're tired of the one from Bangladesh. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, come on, leave you alone. But notice this. He said, no, you don't have a commandment to tithe because that law has changed. How has that law changed? Because the guy who was the priest came from the tribe of Levi. For he of whom these things are spoken, talking about Jesus, belongs to another tribe or the order of Melchizedek from which no man officiated at the altar. He says, okay, you used to tithe according to the priesthood of Aaron and his sons, the Levites, and they are the ones who are the commandment to receive tithe. But now we have a new priest. For it is evident that our Lord came out of Judah. Jesus didn't come from the tribe of Levi, so the Levites are the ones who had the commandment to tithe, and Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. And Moses never spoke of anything concerning priesthood from the tribe of Judah. Now, if this guy came from Judah and Judah had no commandment to receive tithes, then the law of necessity has changed. Oh. Are you with me so far? So we can still be under a commandment to tithe. Because our high priest hasn't come from the tribe that was given the commandment to receive the tithe. 
We, we cannot. Jesus Christ is incompatible with the law. Every, if you ever made Jesus the Lord of your life, you couldn't make Jesus the high priest of your faith while keeping the law. He is incompatible with the law since he didn't come from the tribe that was charged with keeping the law. No wonder you're trying to pray in the name of Jesus. And it is a different order. Because you are coming with your list of how good you are. Somebody going to see this today. Are you with me? If you, if you understand what I've said so far, just say amen. amen. And here is the deal. Have we just read it from the Bible? You know I'm not talking from my head. We can read it. How many of you brought your own Bible? Okay, okay. Now, so if we've changed the tribe from which the priests come, that means... The law must also change. The law, which was the commandment to tithe, must also change. Let's see if you can take this liberty. Some of you are thinking, boy, this is so good. <laughs> After today, forget the evening service. I'm at Selfridges. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're thinking. How many of you so far understand that Jesus is your high priest? Let me see your hand. How many of you understand that you are not under a curse and not obliged to keep the law because Jesus kept it for you? Let me see your hand. How many of you understand that if Jesus Christ is your high priest, you are not under a commandment to tithe because since he came from a different tribe, of necessity, the commandment to tithe has been rescinded. It has changed. How many of you understand that? Okay. I'm glad you do. <laughs> I am glad you do. And it is yet far more evident that if in the likeness of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who has come, who is that priest? Jesus. Come on. Who is that priest? Jesus. Who is that priest? Not according to the law of the flesh of the commandment, but according to the power of an endless spirit of life. For he testifies you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. For on the one hand, there is an annulling of the former commandment. Check this out. It has been annulled. It's been canceled. The commandment to tithe has been canceled. Can you read? The commandment to tithe has been canceled because of the weakness and unprofitability of it. It was unprofitable, so they changed it. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope. Nobody shouted even one. Let's try again. There is the bringing in of a what? Better hope through, through which we draw near to God. And in as much as he was not a priest without an oath. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm off back there in Hebrews 8, 7. No, now, look at this. So, so far, I'm redeemed from the curse. So you can't scare me saying, I'm under a generational curse. If I've missed it, God's going to kill me. That won't work. Because all of my sins were punished in the body of Jesus. Come on, somebody. The day you got born again, you were judged that day. Okay, okay, I'm going to leave that alone. And check this out. Righteousness won't come through the law. Neither will the blessing or the inheritance come through the law. You can't even give or tithe based on the law because the priest that we now have didn't come from the tribe who had the commandment to receive the tithe. They canceled it. So then that begs the question. So then why did Abraham tithe? Why should I give? Do I have to? <laughs> well, why? Because Abraham, 430 years before the law, 
without anybody telling him and teaching him and bringing him to church or threatening him or telling him there's no blessing if you don't. He died. What, what would cause a man to do something that the average person don't want to do? Did he know something that we ought to be finding out about? See, now that joy is going down again, you see. <laughs> you, were, you were on a high. When you I don't have to tithe. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> did, I, did I not tell you that your faces, I replay them when I get home? I just had a Kodak moment right there. Some of <laughs> Why? Now you'll never say, wake up. Because the devil might steal this from you. The devil might steal this from you. Now, now, now so let's see what happened. That moved the man to tithe. Go to the book of Genesis chapter 14. Let's just see when he met Melchizedek. Well, what happened in that scenario? Genesis chapter 14. And guess what? I said all the amens in the office. I shouted hallelujah. I'm not expecting you to run around the hippodrome today. Thank you so much for joining us again on today's broadcast. Our prayer is that the Word of God has ministered to you today and released an eternal deposit of God's goodness and divine plan into your life. And so until next time, this is Ramson and Estrella reminding you that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, you get wisdom and in all of your getting, get understanding. God bless you. Thank you for watching Get Understanding with Ramson and Estrella Mumba. This broadcast has been made possible by friends, partners, and viewers like you in this area. We trust that you've been blessed and thank you in advance for your continued prayers and generous financial support. For information about our ministries or to download our free podcasts, visit us at www.elshaddaitoday.com.